Good morning, everyone. As many of you know, my favorite sport to play is tennis. It's always been something I've been very passionate about. Today, however, I'm not going to be talking about me playing the sport, but rather different perspectives I've seen it played. One of the most unique experiences I've had with tennis was getting the opportunity to be a ball boy for a professional event that happened to take place in Dallas. A couple days before the tournament, I had to try out and go through basic training. After I went through training, the tur tournament director emailed me saying that they were going to use me for their tournament. I was thrilled because I was literally going to be on the court with world-class players. When the tournament began, I was really nervous because the tournament director assigned me to center court, which has the largest capacity, and he wanted me to ball boy a match for the number eight play ranked player in the world, Marin Cilic, who just recently won the US Open. And for this match, I was basically going to be his caddy. And I would get balls for him to serve, give him his towel in between points, and I would hold an umbrella for him to shade him when he switched sides. And it was really cool to see the game played at this high of a level from an on-court vantage point. But being a ball boy can have its cons. Uh, Chilich, who's a really big guy, he's six foot six, hit a 138 mile per hour serve that happened to hit me. And uh, I tried my hardest to get out of the way. There's no way I was going to avoid it. And it was really funny because the chair referee stopped the whole match and was like, do you need medical assistance? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And Chilich actually felt really bad about it. And after the match, he talked to me and apologized. But I told him not to apologize because hitting me in the leg was one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> and, uh, but not all the players are that nice to the ball boys, especially when they're losing. And uh, in a different match I was assigned to, I was ball bowling for this Russian guy. And he was losing really, really badly. And I didn't understand a word he was saying, but I can tell you guys it shouldn't be anything I should be saying here. And uh, throughout the match, he just kept getting more and more frustrated. Then he took it out on me, and he was like, you must bring balls faster to me. And, and I was like, whoa, buddy, it's not my fault you're losing. But <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was just thinking that. But then a couple of points later, a couple of points later, it eventually reached a peaking point, and uh, he smashed his racket, kind of like how you see up there. And uh, the ball boys get the honor of throwing it away in the trash can. And the best part of it was the referee gave him an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, which made me happier, but made him even angrier. And then another perspective I've been fortunate to have is attending two of the four major Grand Slam events that take place every year in Australia, Paris. London and New York City. And two summers ago, I was fortunate enough to travel to Paris to attend the French Open. And it's a really neat tournament because the surface is red clay rather than concrete. And one of the things I realized was while I was watching, I really had no idea what the PA announcer was saying or anything he was saying in French. And the only thing I could understand was the score on the Jumbotron and the game of tennis, which really made me feel immersed in the French culture and experience. And this past summer, I got to go to arguably one of the most prestigious sporting events in the world, uh, Wimbledon. And this was my favorite of the two Grand Slam events because I thought it brought a more diverse crowd to the event. And I really appreciated how formal the tournament was and how it's kept its tradition of being prim and proper for over 100 years. And one example is this, is that every player is required to wear all white apparel. And the food you get is drastically different from what you get here in America. If you think you're going to get beer and nachos, trust me, you won't. And you're going to probably find things like champagne and strawberries and cream in the concession stands. But the thing I appreciated the most was the diversity of people it brought. One of the matches I attended was between a Japanese player and a Canadian player. And even though the locals spoke English, the majority of the crowd at Wimbledon did not. And all around me, I kept hearing mixes of French, Spanish, German, Spanish, and English. And it, it really hit me and amazed me how one sport could bring together so many different cultures. But at the end of the day, tennis has taught me three valuable things. First is to respect different cultures. Every tournament on the world tour has its own unique flair that unites everyone in, ten in attendance with their respective cultures. Second thing is that it's a lifelong sport. This is why you see so many active senior citizens con continuing to play this versatile sport. And there's a reason why at most country clubs, the two sports they promote the most are golf and tennis. It's truly a sport that you can play through every stage of your life. And lastly, tennis is a very social sport that allows you to meet a broad range of people 
with one common bond. These are some of the reasons I love the sport, and I would encourage everyone to participate in it at some point for the, in their lives and realize for themselves what a fun and truly great sport it is. Thank you.